In the previous few lectures, we've been looking at the fact that when you have electricity that is flowing, it produces its own magnetic field. Now what we're going to look at is, does the opposite also work? Can we take a magnetic field and cause or could we create electricity from that? So let me just say that again. In the previous couple of lectures, we've been looking at if you have a wire, for example, and there's electricity flowing through that, what we saw was that there's always a magnetic field that gets produced. Okay, so what we did is we saw that electricity equals magnetic field. Now, the obvious question we would now like to ask is, does a magnetic field produce electricity? And that is the topic of this lesson. So imagine you were a scientist who wanted to discover this. Well, if I, I mean, I know what I would do. I would take a piece of wire and I would go get myself a little magnet, for example, and I would hold it next to the wire. And then I would need some type of device like a ammeter. Let's draw some funny type of device like that. And I would look on my ammeter to see if any current is being produced. So I would hold my magnet there and I know that my magnet produces its own little magnetic field. And I would try to see if any current gets produced. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a simulation. And so here we have it guys, look at this. I'm busy holding a magnet next to this piece of wire. Those little dots represent the electricity. And I don't know about you, but nothing's really happening right now. There's no electricity flowing. Okay, so I'm going to quickly take my magnet away and I'm just going to pack it away into my little toolbox. Whoa, did you see that? As soon as I moved my magnet, there was a bit of light. Look here. See that? As soon as I move the magnet, all of a sudden there's electricity. This electricity is coming out of nowhere. There's no battery or anything. Whenever I move the magnet, electricity is being produced. And this was an incredible discovery made by scientists back in the day. If you hold a magnet next to a wire, no electricity will flow. However, if you move the magnet, or if you move the wire, then stuff is going to happen. And it looks like the faster I move it, the brighter, or the faster, the electricity flows. So can you see that? The faster I move it, even if I put the magnet inside the wire and I stop moving it, nothing happens. So the main thing I want you to understand right now is that you can make electricity by using a magnetic field as long as you cause the magnetic field to change the whole time. You have to keep moving the magnet around and so as soon as you cause a change in the magnetic field, it's going to cause electricity to be produced. That is an incredible phenomenon. Okay, so the one thing I want you to recognize is that the faster we move the magnet, the higher the electricity, or the higher the current, okay? So the faster we move it, the better the electricity production. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this loop. I'm going to make the loop larger. And let's see. Okay, I don't know if you guys can recognize, but that is a very bright light bulb compared to when I make the wire very small. So let me do that. Okay, it's not really showing a difference. Okay, well what you should be seeing is that the larger you make that loop, the more intense the light bulb's brightness became. So the larger that area, the 
more electricity we will be able to produce. Now, if you can see over here in the top right of my screen, it, um, I've cut some of it off, but it says strength of magnet. So the magnet is currently on 100 strength. Let me lower that down to quite a weak magnet. And let's have a look. Can you see that? The intensity of the light bulb is not that high, even if I move the magnet really quickly. And then the last thing I want to show you is that if I put the magnet up here, nothing is going to happen. It has to be able to, the magnetic lines that go from the magnet need to be able to go through that loop of wire, okay? So just keep all these things in mind. To make the highest or the most amount of electricity, you need a very strong magnet. Your loop must be as big as possible. You need to move the magnet as fast as you can. And you also need to make sure that the magnet is actually reaching the loop. And so we need to be able to calculate how much magnetism is actually being experienced by the wire. Okay, because here we've got a magnet. Now that, mag that magnet has a magnetic field. Okay, so for example, it always goes from north, so we can draw arrows going like this. And we need to be able to work out how much magnetism is the wire feeling. That amount of magnetism is called the magnetic flux. Now to calculate the magnetic flux, we would use this formula over here. And I'm going to explain it carefully shortly. So, the amount of magnetic flux, which is this one, let me actually write that down for you, magnetic flux, is equal to, first of all, this B over here is called the magnetic field strength, or some textbooks call it the magnetic flux density. Okay, pretty much what B stands for is how strong is the magnet? How strong is the magnet? Okay, so how strong is the magnet? Then we also need to look at the area. Now the area is the loop, okay? It's this part over here. So if it's a circle, you would have to use pi r squared. If they use a square loop, then it's obviously just length times breadth and things like that. And then this cos theta, this is an interesting part. Okay, but quickly, just remember, A is the area of the wire, like the loop, for example. Because if I had to draw that loop at a different angle, let's quickly um, draw it from the front, that loop would look like this. Okay, and we're busy putting the magnet right into that loop. And so the larger this area over here, the more magnetic lines will be able to go through that loop. Okay, whereas if the loop is very small, those magnetic lines, a lot of them won't be able to go through the loop only a few of them will go through the loop, okay? So the larger the area, the more magnetic flux will be able to go into that loop. And as I said, sometimes it will be a square, okay? Now this cos theta part is quite an interesting thing. So I'm gonna show it to you like this. If you put the magnet immediate, like directly in front of the loop and you draw a few magnetic lines, we can see that a lot of those magnetic lines are going to be able to go through that loop. However, if your magnet is up here, it's not going to be great because you're going to have a few lines going this way. The lines can also do this, but let's see how many of those lines could actually go through. You see, they've already started missing the loop, okay? And so we have to look at the angle of relative or where the magnet is relative to the piece of loop itself, okay? So how do we measure this angle? Well, what we do is the following. We look at the loop first, and we draw a line going at 90 degrees to that loop, 
Okay, so I've, here's my loop. I'm going to draw a line going at 90 degrees to that, and I'm going to call that line the normal. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my magnetic field lines. Okay, so I'm going to draw a couple of those. Well, I'll just draw one. Okay, now what you do is you measure the angle between the magnet line and the normal. So that's going to be this angle over here. And that is going to be called theta. Okay, so would you say we should make the angle theta very big or very small if we want a lot of magnetic field lines to go through? Well, well done if you said that we should make the angle very small. Because if I get a different magnet now, and I put it down there, this magnet will clearly be able to influence the loop a lot more. Let's see how it would, let's see what the angle theta would look like. So I'm going to draw a magnetic line going from my magnet towards the loop, and then I'm going to measure this angle over here. And you can see that this angle is a lot smaller. So the smaller we can make that angle, the more the magnetic flux is going to be. So Kevin, where does cos theta come into it? Well, let's say we have a very small angle. Let's say the angle is 10 degrees. If you type that in on your calculator, cos 10, you get 0, 0,98. Now, as you make that angle bigger, let's say 80 degrees, then if you type that on your calculator, you get a very small value. So the larger you make the angle, the smaller cos becomes. And so if you make the angle very big, like this one over here, you're going to make this part very small. And so if you multiply by a very small number, you're going to cause this answer to become smaller. So the larger the angle, the smaller the magnetic flux. Okay, so let's summarize. To make the, or to allow the most magnetic flux, you need the following. You need a str well, you need to change the strength of the magnet, okay? Let me show you what strength of magnet actually looks like. So for the first one, let's pretend that this over here is a strong magnet. What that looks like is the following. So what I've tried to show you is that there are many lines going from that magnet. That is what a strong magnet is. It gives off many magnetic lines, okay? Or let me quickly show you something. If I had to show you what that loop looks like from the front or from the back, it would look like this. There would be many lines going through that loop. Okay, can you see all of those lines? And our goal, or to make the magnetic flux as high as possible, is to get as many of those lines to go through the loop. That will be a high magnetic flux. Now I'm going to show you a weak magnet. Okay, so if we have a weak magnet, it would look something like this. Okay, it wouldn't have as many uh, field lines or magnetic flux lines going through. And so if I had to show you what the loop looks like, you'd probably only see that. Okay, so that is what this part does over here. That is the strength of the magnet. Next would be the area, okay? Because if I can make this loop bigger, then I will be able to collect more of those lines that are going through. For example, let's say I use the same type of magnet and let's say that it can shoot off um, 10 lines like this. Well, let me just use seven lines. Okay, so it shot off seven lines. Only um, one, two, three of them went through the loop. But if I had to use a loop, that was larger, like maybe it could go up to here, and I use the same type of magnet, then all of a sudden, if I use a larger loop, I can collect more of these lines. So if you can make the area larger, then you will be able to collect more lines. And then with the theta part, your goal is not to make theta big, 
your goal is to try and make theta small if you want to collect more lines. Because the way that cos works is the smaller the angle, the larger cos theta becomes. It's quite interesting. That's how cos works. So a smaller angle makes cos larger. Okay? So because remember, to work out that angle, you should always start off by drawing a normal to the loop. So you take your loop and you draw a 90 degree to the loop. Okay? So if your loop was along on the side like this, then your normal would go like that. It must always go at 90 degrees to the loop. Then what you do is you draw a couple of magnetic field lines. Well, I'm just going to draw one just to keep everything nice and neat. So that's my normal line, which is always at 90 degrees to the loop. And then I'm going to draw a field line or a magnetic field line. And then this angle over here, that is theta. And the smaller that you can make that angle, the larger cos theta will become. And that's going to cause your magnetic flux to be larger.